Uh, my name is Jimmy Lai. I'm a staff software engineer at Carta. Today I will talk about Python linters at scale. So in this talk, you can expect to learn about the different scaling problems when using Python linters and learn about what kind of tools you can use to solve those problems. Uh, for each uh, category of problem, we provide a checklist to help you uh, navigate through the solutions in a more structured way. Um, so we start with some context. Uh, the, we have many Python code bases, and one of them we call it monolith. It's a large Python code base that has uh, a lot of code. In our uh, case, it has more than three million nine. But in the meantime, we also have other smaller Python code bases. They are either uh, some microservices, gRPC service, or some Python libraries. And we also have hundreds of developers. Um, so all those comes with different scaling problems. And before we start talking about the problems, let's uh, take a look at some Python popular linters. Uh, here are the linter tools we use at Kata. Uh, Black is used for code formatting, and it can format the code into a consistent way, like turn the red block code into the green block code to make them easy to read and write for developers. The configuration of Black can be added to PyProject.tomo uh, in the section uh, tool.black. Um, the default line length is 88. Uh, you may want to extend it to a longer number, uh, considering everyone has a wide monitor now. Uh, or you may want to specify the target version or exclude some generated code. Um, we also use iSort to sort our imports. So uh, the different import statements from the same module can be organized uh, together and sorted in alphabetically. Um, the configuration can also be added to PyProject.tomo. Uh, when you use iSort with black, you may want to use black profile uh, to keep the format consistent with black format. We also use Flaygate to uh, check our code style, syntax error, and bugs. Um, it can provide suggestions like undefined name or ambiguous variables. Um, unfortunately, Flaygate doesn't configure through PyProject.tomo. You can use any of those config files. Um, when use Flaygate with uh, black, you may want to ignore some uh, some rules from the uh, black A to, in order to avoid the conflict. Otherwise, developers may feel confused. We also use MyPy uh, to type check our code, uh, which is really useful to catch at errors while uh, developers editing the code uh, instead of uh, finding them until the code was ready to uh, production. Uh, it can be configured in PyProject Tomo, and we usually recommend uh, configured MyPy by enabling those uh, configs to make the type checking and type annotation more strict, uh, which can make the uh, MyPy suggestion more useful and more specific. So, uh, so far we can see we have we, we want to use a lot of linter, and each linter has a lot of config. Um, and in general, um, we usually uh, configure our linter by uh, using our version control system, not like it. So we will add our linter version and linter configs in our uh, code base. Um, we can use a specific Python package management tool like pip or poultry, uh, provide the uh, linter version. Uh, in this example, we specify iSort, uh, 
version in a requirements file so we can use pip to in install it. We also store the config in pipecraft.tonal. So when we run linters, we will use the specific config in the code base. And yeah, that's the common approach. Um, so once we have the version and config in the code base, we can to run them uh, in the local environment where developer edit the code. Um, the goal is to help developer detect inter errors early at development time and iterate fast. Uh, we can use the mentioned uh, Python package management tool to install the package or reinstall them in a Docker image. And in either way, uh, we, we can also configure the git commit hook to automatically run linters at commit time or uh, integrate with IDE uh, through file watcher or language server to monitor IDE events. So by doing all those, we can help developers uh, run linters easily. Um, it, and the developer can also choose to run them in a ad hoc way through uh, CLI command. Um, another environment we want to run that inter is the continuous in the integration environment, uh, which we want to uh, always make sure the code merged to the main branch, don't introduce new errors, test error or inter errors. So whenever a change is pushed um, or proposed, we want to run uh, all the linters uh, by starting a BI runner. And in order to fast, uh, finish the linter run fast, we will want to pre-install and cache the dependencies in the CI runner, either through remote cache or using Docker image. Um, that way we can run, uh, immediately start the CI runner when a commit is pushed. Okay, now um, let, let's start look into what are the scaling challenge we are going to facing and solve. So the first challenge comes from the large code base we have. In our example, uh, we have uh, more than 3 million sites of code and more than 30,000 Python files. When we run uh, the mentioned linter in this code base, uh, black can take more than 10 minutes to finish. MyPy can take uh, 30 minutes to finish which is uh, too much time for developers to iterate fast. Another challenge uh, of scaling comes from the having too many code bases. Uh, the, all, we have many code bases and uh, initially different code bases enabled different linters uh, with different versions and different config. So a lot of inconsistency that caused poor developer experience. And in order to make them uh, consistent uh, with the same best practice, it takes endless effort to upgrade the linters and config. Um, and the third challenge comes from having too many developers. Uh, all of our developers, they uh, constantly submit pull requests to make changes to our code base. And it's not easy to understand how the interns work for them. So each developer on each code base and on each code changes, it's just too many of them. Um, and people we have in merge queue, we also occasionally has uh, the inter errors merged to the main branch, which causes issues, blocks other change. Um, and the simple data situation, if it shows up too many times, it can slow down a lot of developers. We want to help them move faster. And also, so far we only talk about best practice, uh, linters or Python, but to development, we also use other tools. We use GitHub, we use Docker, and many other tools. We actually also need best practice for those tools. So we summarize our challenges in 
two categories. One is the linter exposure, another one is the poor developer experience. Um, we develop and try to solve the solution um, over the past couple of years, and here are the uh, some of the different approach we take, which work. Uh, so for stating up the linters, our strategy was to avoid unnecessary messes on a large number of codes. Um, so here's the checklist uh, which summarizes different approach. The first one, if we can only run uh, the linter on updated file, uh, we can make the run fast. Uh, when running linter locally, we can try to get the updated file from it, um, like doing a git diff, um, or if you are integrating with uh, your IDE editor, you may use a file watcher to get the list of updated file and provide them to the linter. That way, linter on, only analyze the updated code to be fed. And in CI, uh, when developer propose a change, they only updated a few files in their pull request. So we can get the updated file list from the GitHub pool API uh, like this. Given a pull request, we can get a list of updated file and provided them to the group, uh, the inter to run faster. Another way, uh, a tool that you can use to only run an updated file and run different linters in parallel easily is the pre-commit uh, tool. So it, it's a tool that provides uh, several features. It can run on a committed file, uh, help you configure your pre-commit hook easily. And when you configure multiple linters, it runs them in parallel. And it automatically set up a uh, virtual environment, install the linters in the environment, and reuse the environment. So when you run uh, commit multiple times, you, it can reuse the environment. So the configuration is something like this: uh, pre-commit config demo file uh, by adding a config like this. We add a uh, black. Uh, version 22.10 uh, to be configured uh, in the pre-commit. So we can run the pre-commit command uh, or, um, or just uh, commit our code, then the linters will be run. And when you configure multiple linters, it will run them in parallel. Um, Another strategy to make the inter run fast is to reuse the prior results. Um, especially for large copies, uh, some linters uh, like MyPy, they could require the knowledge of the entire copies and the entire dependency graph, which can be a huge uh, analysis. Uh, if we cache the, the previous run, Results and store them uh, remotely. We can download them uh, in local environment or in CI environment to be reused. So the workflow to use remote cache is like this. Um, when we start the linter run, we will check if uh, the remote cache has a recent cache that we can reuse by looking up a uh, uh, git revision we are currently at. If, it, if a cache is available, we can just download the cache and run the linter, and the linter can reuse the uh, previous analysis result. At the end of the run, we also update, uh, upload the updated cache back to be reused later. Um, in our large code base, my bar used to take more than 20 minutes, but by using remote cache, we can improve the long time to be less than five minutes. Um, uh, uh, another strategy to uh, 
not only reuse the prior, prior results, but also try to find a faster implementation is so uh, an example is like Rust. Rust is a Rust implementation of Flake and iSort. Uh, it can parse the code and run different analysis. Uh, and the implementation Rust make it really fast. It also built uh, some cache features, so uh, it, uh, it it can provide pretty good uh, performance, and it's getting really popular this year. So now let's uh, look into the second category of the scaling problem, which is the full developer experience. Uh, we talk about inconsistency and the entity's effort and hard to know what's going on. Um, so the strategy to solve all those problems is to build uh, linters for any best practice we want to uh, apply uh, and provide auto fix to help developers uh, fix any issues uh, in a productive way. Uh, the checklist includes telemetry, custom linters, and auto fix. Um, telemetry uh, is the way to help us understand what's going on. Uh, so we can collect metrics from uh, the CI and local uh, linter runs uh, to understand where our linter runs, in which environment, which code base, what kind of suggestions it makes, and how it runs. What's the latency? Are there any exceptions raised? Uh, so we use Datadog to collect metrics like this. We can know uh, MyPy make a unused type ignore comment, um, a pull request, um, add a specific file, specific line. Uh, we can also know this MyPy run. It takes how much time and aggregate the the latency metrics for us to work on uh, speed up. So with the telemetry, we can understand what's going on. Then we can uh, try to build more linters to, uh, and also provide auto fix to help our developers. Um, when we build custom Python linters and auto fix, we can use a framework. It's called Fix It. Um, here are some built-in rules. That can that that are implemented with fixes. Uh, the first best practice is to always explicitly say frozen uh, when you declare a data class. Uh, that way, uh, by default, you may want to make your data class immutable by making frozen equal to true. So this linter can detect when frozen isn't specified and warn uh, warn the developer. And the suggested auto fix is automatically add the frozen equal to true. Uh, there's also another rule, um, such as use app string when a percent format is used. So this uh, linter helps you build suggestions and auto fix for Python code easy. And uh, in order to provide a better develop experience, we also integrate with GitHub check. Uh, which allow us to uh, mark the check as required to protect our main branch and allow us to provide notation uh, to show the, the inter errors in the context of code to help developers understand the inter error uh, easier on their pull request. So, um, and also we mentioned we may have some other non-Python linters, which uh, we want to apply some custom based practice. Uh, for example, before we have a merge queue, we found uh, errors uh, sometimes merge to the main branch when two pull requests, they have some logical conflicts. In order to uh, reduce the, this uh, issue, we have a uh, best practice linter to uh, which is a bot to uh, check every pull request 
if the pull request is behind the main branch too much, it will make a comment to recommend the developer to uh, rebase. Um, to make the rebase very easy, we also provide an auto fix. So as it mentions here, developer can just add a rebase label on layer pull request to automatically trigger the rebase. Uh, and when, because of the telemetry matrix we have, we will know when an error show up on a developer, if the same error also show up, uh, uh, when the error show up on the pull request, when the same error also show up on the main branch, we know this error is not uh, caused by the change on the pull request. So we, the bot will make a comment like this, saying uh, the error is from the main branch and um, a fix is already available. So they can uh, just rebase to get a fix instead of uh, wasting their time on investigating uh, unrelated issues. Um, we also built uh, some other custom Python linters um, to uh, help us um, be able to incrementally solve uh, linter, uh, solve uh, errors incrementally, especially when you have a large code base that has a, a lot of uh, tech depth. Um, in this case, linter will uh, start with uh, making suggestions to prevent new usages. Uh, but in the meantime, we also want to collect the existing uh, errors to fix them incrementally. And in this case, the uh, strategy we mentioned, uh, collect parametry metrics and build customer linter will be useful. With the, uh, this approach, we, uh, in this example, we try to build a tool to uh, deprecate some uh, library. So um, this timestamp is a target we want to deprecate it, but we want to stop the bleeding by uh, blocking new usages. And we know it still has uh, a couple hundred existing usage from our metrics. So we uh, continuously collect metrics by analyzing the code base. So we know what's the existing errors and we can just uh, help the uh, engineering team uh, incrementally fix those by providing this dashboard to them so they can easily find the action items and the owners of those items to collaborate with them and see their progress over time. Um, another tool we built to uh, help out the developers across different code base uh, reuse uh, the workflows, um, like the, the GitHub check creation, uh, the linters. So we use, um, we build a framework. Okay. We build a, sure. Well, we build a reusable framework, uh, which, um, it provides a simple, simple APIs. Uh, so anyone can use those API to build their custom linter and auto fix. Uh, and they can focus on building the custom linter logic. And the framework automatically collects metrics and generate the GitHub checks and um, with annotation. Um, so the last thing about autofix is automatic refactoring. Um, um, probably you already try to use dependent bot to automatically bump uh, your dependency package version. Um, we built our custom auto fix to um, fix some trivial uh, linter errors so developers don't need to uh, spend their time on fixing them. We use this CSG to build uh, custom commas and use um, PyGitHub to uh, library to create pull requests. And um, so I ha had a, another talk uh, last year, talk about uh, how we build the automatic refactoring framework uh, that uh, 
create pull requests and manage their life cycle to get them merged uh, to uh, solve the large tech debt problems. If you're interested, you can find my talk uh, in EuroPython 2022. And also check my blog post about how we use it to solve type annotation problem. Um, we, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, we have a lot of uh, auto fix. So here are some example. For Flake, uh, he, he, he complained about unused import a lot. So we provide auto fix that can use um, on the editor, but also on the pull request. So we integrate with GitHub check. So GitHub check can show a auto fix button like this. When developer click on the fix breaking button on a pull request, uh, the bot will kick off a workflow, uh, automatically push a fix. Uh, that way they don't even need to uh, open the editor uh, or run git commit. Everything will be run, uh, generated automatically. Um, we also build auto fix for uh, some MyPy errors. Uh, for example, one common one is non-return. When a function has no return statement, it could uh, has a non-return uh, uh, annotation, and we build an auto fix, uh, which can automatically uh, do that for developers. Um, we also have a custom in, uh, auto fix. Uh, for example, uh, the pull request has some been reviewed after it's created. So while uh, in a large organization, you may have different teams and different code is owned by different team, it's not easy to figure out who owns the code you modify. So we provide an auto fix, notify reviewer teams, so developer can have this label on their pull request, and we will based on the corners and the GitHub stack mapping, we have to find the corners directional, automatically send a reminder for the developer to get their uh, request reviewed. Um, yeah, here's another example, Re release and merge automatically Re, uh, release, make a new release when the pull request is merged, if this label is added. So as a result, um, we were able to develop a framework that makes building linters to support um, custom uh, linter suggestion and auto fix for 200 developers in more than 30 different code bases. And with this, we make running uh, inter with the same configuration uh, and that practice easier. So, so far each week, the inter has run more than 10,000 times and provided 25,000 suggestions. And the auto fix also been used uh, a lot of times. So to recap, we provide a checklist for those inter to speed it up. And we also have a strategy for uh, improving the developer experience. Um, thank you for your attention. Uh, if you are interested in more of our work, you can check out our engineering blog. If you are interested in our job, we are also hiring. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your talk, Jimmy. It was nice hearing from you, and it was very useful to hear about linters. And uh, maybe will you be available on Discord, maybe for remote people to maybe ask some questions for the next minutes or something? Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Have a nice day, Jimmy.